Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm delighted to be here to be able to share with you a bit about North Ayrshire's experience. <clears throat> My name is Morna Ray and I manage community planning in North Ayrshire. Before I click on to my first slide, I just want to pick up on a theme that's emerged in both the, the, the inputs we've had so far in terms of emergency admissions. Emily highlights the particular area in North Ayrshire that had very concerning trends in terms of emergency admissions over time. Um, and you also picked up a bit on it in terms of um, the relevance of that kind of data to spatial planning. So I thought it might be helpful just to give you a very practical illustration of what we're doing about that and that, in, in that particular issue in that community in, in North Ayrshire. So we're doing a lot of work in relation to the housing stock in our conclusion just now in terms of demolishing existing housing stock and building new housing stocks much more suitable for that community's needs with a view to ultimately improving their well-being. So I thought I just want to pick up on that theme that's obviously emerged in those couple of inputs. Okay, I want to give a wee bit of North Asia context first of all because um, I think it's helpful to understand kind of where we're coming from and why we're working the way that we are in North Ayrshire. A lot of this, I think, will be transferable to other areas, but obviously helpful to know where it's, where it's um, emerged from. I'm going to talk about the community planning approach um, to our locality planning, and then I'm going to pass over to Neil, who's going to talk about spatial planning, place making, give some specific examples, and talk around the successes of, of this approach. So I'm going to talk a wee bit about um, our people, our place, and our partnerships to give you that context. So. We have a population of around 136, um, 135, 890, that says actually, in the population. Um, we have quite a high ratio of older people, so um, higher than the Scottish average, and that Scotch average is, um, of course, not in the whole, it's about 18.5%, we've got 21.5% older population. We've got lower than average um, life expectancy, both for, for males and females. We have higher than average unemployment claimant rates. We have higher than average data zones and that 50% most deprived in Scotland. Um, and we have higher than average um, children living in poverty. So there's some particular challenges for us in partnership in relation to that picture. So in a sense, there's, some, there's a lot of negatives in there, but moving on to place, there's a lot of positives, I think, in terms of North Asia as a, as a physical space. Um, we are very lucky um, to work in North Ayrshire, I believe. We've got a lovely physical environment in which to work. Um, we've got the coastline, we've got our island communities as well, as well as our towns. There's a lot there that we can capitalise on and use going forward. So that was our people, our place and now our partnership. Um, We've got a really strong community planning partnership in North Ayrshire. We've got really dedicated and committed partners across the piece. Um, and I think there's the four key drivers for that I wanted to highlight today to you this morning. First of all, we've got a very clear focus on inequalities. FFA stands for Fair for All, that's our, our inequality strategy in North Ayrshire. And we're signed up to that across the range of community planning partners. And people get, I generally think people get how inequality relates to their work police colleagues, our fire colleagues, our public health colleagues across the piece really understand that the relevance of this to the way that they're working. Innovation. We're not scared in North Ayrshire to try, try new different things. Um, so to, some specific examples of that, um, our current work with Carnegie around uh, the place of kindness and what are the institutional uh, barriers towards people being kind and what are the spatial barriers around people and communities and us as, as organisations being kind. Uh, we have a basic income pilot ongoing as well. So just a couple of examples about how we're, we're definitely innovating and developing as a partnership. The importance of place. Um, the strength of our communities, um, the relationship people have with the local communities is very strong through our, our partnership working. I'll talk a bit more detail about locality partnership working in a minute. We have strong leadership and committed partners. Um, the tweet on the far, far side there is from Elaine, who's Assistant Director of Public Health in, in the Ayrshire and um, And that was a tweet she put on um, a few Saturdays ago when our, our locality partnership conference. Um, a number of people that came out on a Saturday to talk about locality partnership was amazing. That in itself think, says something. Uh, people at all levels, um, all, a variety of areas across the nation came out to, uh, to share. Um, so those, part, those partners are willing to give us their time, their energy, they're really committed um, and we also have our CIF, which 
which stands for our Community Investment Fund. So that's really about um, the council in, in particular putting its money where its mouth is. So we've got a few million pounds that our, our locality partnerships are able to use to help support projects going forward. So that's been a really a real strong mark of the council's commitment in this approach. Okay, our locality partnerships. So we have six locality partnerships in, in North Ayrshire and they cover the whole of our geography. This is a different approach um, to what some of our other um, community planning partners across Scotland have taken. Uh, we decided we didn't want to just focus on some specific areas in North Ayrshire. We wanted to have our locality partnerships coming, covering the breadth um, because we felt also there was needs across that, that whole geography and we were concerned about labelling some communities or areas if we made them our locality partnerships. Um, we also see there's plenty of scope for having slightly bigger geographies people can, can learn and share across those areas. Around the table at our uh, locality partnerships we have community reps. So that could be community council chairs, elected community representatives, a wide variety of people. We also have all our elected members for that area as well as uh, key community planning partners. Um, so it's quite a unique mixture of people get around that table. The role of the county partnerships, very simply, is to identify and address local issues, local priorities. So using things like the Police Standard Toolkit, using a range of um, demographic um, analysis, they can consult with their wider communities, identify what those local priorities are and work out the best ways to address them. We're very clear, it's about value added. It's not duplicating what the, those communities themselves or the partners are already doing in those localities about what, what new can we do together. One of the more contentious, maybe and slightly awkward part of this process was we disestablished our council area committees when we, when we created our locality partnerships. And we're very clear that these aren't just a straight replacement for your committees, but some of the responsibilities that previously sat with those committees, such as street naming, grants, have fallen to locality partnerships. We very much see it as community planning at local level. Um, and we have strong links in place that our locality partnership information can flow up right up to our community planning board. And finally, it's a consensus driven approach. So we've, we've got that mixture of people in the room, you've got officers, you've got elected members, you've got community reps, but there's that parity of esteem around the table um, and at the end of the day they're trying to reach a consensus for what's best for that area and how they're going to move that forward. So that, that's we map at the bottom there about kind of who's around the table. And we have um, senior lead officers in each of our locality partnerships who are members of our strategic management team for CPP, so they link strongly into that, and then with the information flow right up to our community planning board and back down again as well. This gives you a little map of, of how we got there. So I will highlight that, sorry, it's quite small text there, but it starts in 2014, okay? So, so it's not a quick and easy process. Uh, and it started well before the Community Empowerment Act you know, came into force. So we started in 2014, pre-engagement with our elected members, exploring this. Were they up for it? What did they think about the potential of establishing area committees? Lots of conversations, as you can imagine, around what that would mean um, in North Ayrshire. We then worked with the Consultation Institute to train a wide range of partners in terms of best practice and consultation. We went, went out to our communities and consulted on what would our locality partnership boundaries be, what would the remits be, what would the membership be, etc. We, we tweaked our recommendations in line with um, what our communities were telling us and we got our CPP and our council to agree in 2016 that we would um, implement the locality partnership approach. And then since then we've lost a series of meetings, We've had the agreement of local priorities moving into locality plans about how we're actually going to, to make a difference. And more recently we've had that community investment fund money I've been talking about. Um, locality partnerships have made recommendations about how we're going to be using that. So the first ones that came through were around a main shed approach in the Garnet Valley. I'm sure a lot of people are with that, with that approach. And that was specifically around addressing the locality priority of um, social isolation and access to facilities. In Arvin, we've got approval for a digital officer. So that's around improving digital offer across community settings in Arvin, tied into employability. So just a couple of examples at a very practical level about how we're, we're moving towards um, addressing the local priorities. I'm going to pass over to Neil now to uh, talk about things from a conservation planning perspective. Thanks, 
morning. Um, I'm Neil Makovani, so I lead the development plan team in North Ayrshire. Um, so I'll talk about how we've worked to integrate the, the, um, the development of our development plan with that community setting. Um, the first slide I wanted to, uh, to show is, is quite striking for me and it relates to some of the themes that we've talked about already today, the sort of um, data profile and socio-economic analysis of, of, of communities. And this one is really striking for me and it kind of illustrates why, why you would link community and spatial planning together. So this is Coenning, it's a population of about 16,000, it's a fairly mid-sized uh, town um, and it's got some quite, um, quite different outcomes for its residents. Um, what, you've, what I've highlighted here is Whitehurst Park uh, and Blackburns, which is two neighbourhoods in the community, and they're less than a mile apart. Um, and in between them is the, the railway station, which connects from Stranraer right up to Glasgow and right up the coast from the uh, Old Soul Coast and up to Larks. So it's maybe one of the best connected rail stations in, uh, in, in Ayrshire. It's got a college and the town centre sits between them, and there's lots and lots of open space and parks between them. So, Less than a mile, about 15 minutes walking distance. And one of the things we looked at when we were uh, doing the, the data profile was life expectancy in Whitehurst Park is one of the highest in the size in Scotland. It's 92 years, miles. But within that mile of the distance, Blacklands is 71 years. And, and we found this quite striking um, because essentially it's, it's the same place, people living in the same place, with access to the same facilities and amenities and opportunities. And they're experiencing so, such vastly different outcomes. Um, and I think that at the bottom of it is, is actually why they're so strongly linked together because planners are making places and dealing with these issues that exist in places and communities is about dealing with the people that are in those communities and they're not a different, they're not a different thing. So we kind of very much see that as a, a sort of good illustration of why, why they're working to get to deal with these in a co-joint manner is, is, is so important. Um, just looking at what we, we've done for the proposed plan, um, in the context to that, um, obviously the planning bill is going, going ahead um, and one of the things that seems to be least contentious of all the things in the planning bill is that the, there will be an alignment of um, special and community plan. Um, and our timing for preparing the proposed plan was quite opportune for that. So, um, what we've done um, is in the proposed plan which we published in Ayrshire is, is we've actually aligned them so there isn't a, an LDP version of the Lloyd in terms of provision that relates to space, it's, it's actually the same thing. So the key themes of healthier, working, thriving and safer communities are part of both documents um, and you can see that that's what we've published um, and that is, that is the sort of thrust of our proposed plan. I uh, don't expect anyone to read this. Um, but this is um, just, that looks nice, but it could be fairly empty um, if you just uh, made a commitment in there and just the normal things that plan does anyway. Um, but what we did was we took the white vision and we uh, took all the policies of the plan and basically structured the, the um, plan around about that and we did a sort of communities audit of, of the uh, policies that were in the plan just to, um, to understand how in, in the same way that you do a policy impact assessment or an environment assessment, just to make sure that the performance of the policy was maximised to deliver those uh, themes that the, the light had, um, had identified. Um, and we also worked um, closely with the locality groups so that I'll just say, I'll just say that we were so lucky in, t in preparing the plan about the, um, the sort of quality of the network that had been established by, by Morris team. Uh, as one said, it covered the whole of the, the joint here in North Ayrshire, so we were sure that when we went out and spoke to those um, those community partnerships, we were speaking to everyone in North Ayrshire in a very equal fitting. Um, and that, that as a setup was, was building for us to be able to do things like site selection and policy development. And this, this slide is uh, an example of um, one of the site selection processes that we went through. And we thought that the site selection process for housing was essentially very weighted to, towards sort of professionals and um, you know, agencies have their input, developers have their input and we sit and you know, for hours and hours and hours and, and work through issues like um, housing numbers or landscaping. So how we, we, we kind of thought, how is a, a community supposed to be able to challenge that? And there's that sort of wall of sort of technicality 
Yeah, so what we did was we um, we went to the localities and, and got all representative groups and we had um, fantastic facilitation from Irene, um, as we work for you. Um, <laughs> and, um, and we got uh, the locality coordinates who worked on the community plan team to facilitate each of the six localities to look at the potential the sites that were available um, for, for allocation. Uh, and so we, we, we did that and sort of there was no agenda put on to the communities to tell them you know, this is what we think or, or, or not or, or whatever. We presented the technical information and allowed them just to, um, to dis discuss and do the place standard uh, toolkit, respond to what they thought were the issues with the, with the sites and indeed the places they were, were in. Um, and we were able to take that back to elected members and essentially produce this sort of performance. It's a bit complicated, but um, essentially that is all of the technical information presented alongside all of the community <coughs> views. Um, so it was, it was a way that we were trying to make sure that there was equal footing given to the community views before councils decided what sites they were happy with or not. Um, and the councils were quite responsive to that. They knew the sites and knew the community views before they were expected to take decisions on that. <coughs> uh, we, um, uh, just in terms of the look and feel of the development plan, we, um, we were quite keen that the development plan, the, the, the previous version that we were replacing was a very text heavy document. We kind of thought, let's flip that, let's make it about um, communities. Um, so, specialists will always be able to use the development plan. But it's not been used by community, it would look like something that can be used. So, we've embedded the theme of the locality areas. Um, we do the place standards, um, the community, the locality groups identified their own priorities, and we've embedded those in the development plan. Um, so, they are from setting up the site as spatial strategy, as key, key priorities. And then, the way that we presented the information was very um, focused towards key changes in the area and, and the sort of social profiling. Um, and then moving on, just sitting beneath that, we had um, we had key areas for action and placemaking. Um, and this is one of the key areas where there's a lot of money going into the Charleston Harbour. Um, and there's some regeneration land. Um, and what we did was we, we tied that into the capital plan to the community priorities um, and, and sort of gave that holistic approach to key areas of change in the place. Um, so this, this whole structure and setup and visualisation of the plan was entirely geared towards the more expert users of the plan so that it was a much uh, clearer understanding of what, what the change would be in the places. All the development plan policies were just relegated to the back, so they sit there and their purpose is you know, not diminished, but it's about who the plan's communicating to. Just looking at some of the successes and the uh, engagement with the delivery, we've uh, had Charest for locality areas, um, and they, those have driven, um, as Mona had said, um, some of the um, some of the uh, delivery of, of projects. So the community funding projects is linked to development priorities, it's linked to uh, community priorities, and it's, it's had some stuff like main shed, um, the Gavin Park, which is a a whole uh, refit of the park to, to have sort of outdoor gym equipment um, and uh, the participatory budget has been aligned around that as well. Um, in terms of infrastructure and delivery, um, we have, is this a barrier to how we work with that? Well, it's actually been quite the opposite. We've got full uh, industry agency support in Homes for Scotland for the support of their approach as well uh, for the examination. Just to finish off on the um, participatory budget, um, and a uh, good example back to Colonial without um, linking, linking the two is that um, there's recently an award of £800 for a, a 16 year old who stuffed the Lego club at the local library. Um, and so he's had £800 to start that club. And I thought, if that's not um, investing in graduate planners, then, then what is? 